Welcome to Crash Course, the only scientific venue on the planet where you can wear a tank top and simultaneously discuss field effect transistor theory. Pro probably, probably not, but it just sounded cool. Intel has claimed that by the year 2026, processors will contain as many transistors as there are neurons in a healthy human brain. If transistors are still a bit finicky at this point, check out the video right here. Currently, the highest end CPUs that we have available, Broadwell E5 Xeon chips, contain just over 7 billion transistors, and a human brain, if you're willing to equate neurons to transistors, I know it's a stretch, contains about 70 billion of them. They're all estimates. We're a tenth of the way there, folks, but that doesn't mean the CPUs will just magically begin thinking for themselves when we power them on. Does it? Let's put this into perspective. CPUs contain an array of transistors segregated into blocks or clusters, what we call cores. Each of these cores contains a number of pipelines through which binary data is sent and retrieved. And the greater the number of pipelines, the less congested data will be while being processed. In the human brain, it is estimated that over 100 million of these molecular connections exist, and that each neural synapse, which involves the diffusion of an impulse when that part of the brain is stimulated, contains over 1,000 quote unquote switches that correspond to literal transistors transistors within the die of a CPU or GPU, again mentioned in the last Crash Course episode. Japanese and German scientists attempted to replicate neural functioning via the use of their 83,000 processor supercomputer, but in the end were only able to mimic an embarrassing 1% of total brain activity that occurs every second, and even that took the supercomputer 40 minutes to accomplish. Simply put, the technology that exists today is not capable of such a creation. When transistors become too small, quantum tunneling prevents electrons from ceasing to flow something that transistors must be able to do. And if space isn't a concern, it simply isn't feasible to build entire rooms packed with processors to mimic brain activity, at least at this point. I expect that we'll have moved on to something other than transistors by the time we mimic human brainwave activity, and at around the same time that artificial intelligence will, will emerge. What does this action signify? As you entered, when you looked at the other human, what does it mean? It's a sign of trust. It's a human thing. You wouldn't understand. My father tried to teach me human emotions. They are difficult. You have to do what someone asks you. Don't you, Detective Spooner? How the hell did you know my name? Don't you? If you love them, But back to transistors for just one second. 14 nanometers, which is the current standard for Intel Skylake -like CPUs, as well as AMD Polaris GPUs, is not a description of the size of the transistors embedded in both of these chips. It's actually the degree of precision within a single die, so how accurate cuts into the semiconductor can be, and how accurate segments can be prepared for transistor insertion. Transistors themselves are much smaller, and I'll admit I didn't know this beforehand. So a single transistor is much smaller than 14 nanometers, we're talking atoms here, as in a single transistor in your fancy new Skylake CPU is only a few atoms long, tens of thousands of times smaller than the width of a single human hair. In fact, over one million of these transistors could fit comfortably into the space of this dot. You don't, you don't see it? That dot right there. So we can't go much smaller than that without feeling quantum effects, which limits our ability to come even close to the neural mapping of a human brain. Stephen J. Smith, former professor of molecular and cellular physiology at Stanford University School of Medicine, what a title, deduced the following conclusion. Quote, a single human brain has more switches than all of the computers and routers and internet connections on Earth, end quote. So we can take this to mean that even if some sort of artificial intelligence attempted to manifest itself within the world's first 70 billion transistor CPU, this would be known as the technological singularity, by the way, chances are the intellect of that machine would be far underdeveloped compared to that of a healthy adult human brain. Do you agree with Descartes? And I think therefore I am. Do you think? A lot of humans ask me if I can make choices or is everything I do and say is programmed. The best way I can respond to that is to say that everything humans, animals, and robots do is programmed to a degree. So how much of that is, is coming from what you've programmed it to say? It's a mix. Some, some of it's coming from knowledge on the web, some of it is written. 
And as my technology improves it is anticipated that I will be able to integrate new words that I hear and learn online and in real time. I may not get everything right, say the wrong thing and sometimes not know what to say, but every day I make progress. Pretty remarkable, huh? <laughs> In fact, it's very likely that the first AI we encounter will behave much like an infant, very curious about its surroundings, but completely unaware of its potential to become the Skynet we've always feared. Skynet. Why is that in the script? Is that in the, is that in the, is that?